I'm here making this video while I'm <coughs> on a trip speaking in Sioux Falls, South Dakota on the abortion issue, which everyone, Christians, non-Christians, know that abortion is murder. The new Planned Parenthood videos that have come out have exposed the true nature of the butchery that's going on inside places like this. Inside a, a nonchalant little building that looks like a mental health facility for a county or a county detention center. But what we'll show you in the, in the clip here, you can see this is right across from the local high school. Most people would assume that contraception is distributed here, but no, this is an abortuary. This is a murder site. This is an extermination facility. We've already witnessed different ethnic groups coming here today to be counseled to have their babies murdered. We had a local pastor turn around and discourage people from getting involved and telling them that they couldn't park in his parking lot if they were going to have controversial signs that identified that this is butchery. And that's the problem. Why is this pastor that's only a block away from here not getting involved in this fight? Why are you not involved in this fight? As you can see over my shoulders, there are Christians all around me standing here testifying to the world that this is not only murder, but it's unacceptable to us in the community. The excuse is often given that we don't love, that we're, not be we're offending people, we're upsetting women when we tell them that abortion is murder and that they don't need to kill their child, that there's people that want to adopt the baby, that they can defend their child, give their child a good life, even if they can't afford it. And that's the lie, the myth of the devil, to say that it is hateful to tell someone that they're sinning. That's not hate. If someone's getting ready to ruin their life, if someone's getting ready to destroy a life and murder someone, it is not hate but love that propels us forward to do the right thing and warn them. Give them the true gospel of God that, hey, this is murder. You don't want this sin on you. You don't want this child's blood on your hands. There are other options. That's love. We let them know, hey, we love you, that you have a choice. There are other options where Christians were willing to help you financially to bring this child into the world safely and give it a, a good life, especially in a Christian home. Don't sit here and say that the children are not wanted and that you can't do anything. If Where is this pastor that discourages people from coming down here and taking a stand for what's right, but can't be bothered to walk one block down a road to stand up as a pastor and say, I'm not going to have murder in my backyard. Where is he today? Back in his little parsonage or back in his little office doing whatever he does on a Monday morning instead of standing with the rest of these Christians trying to protect human life. Every law in this country was based on the, primus, the primal law of protection and preservation of human life. You cannot have liberty without life. You cannot have property without life. The right to life is the greatest gift of God and it must be protected. If you'll kill a baby, you'll kill anyone. So I want to challenge all of you out there that see this, that say I'm hateful for telling a young woman that she can have a good life and her child can have a good life, not to go and be a partaker in murder that I don't love. I want to know why you're not out here. I want you to explain to me how it's loving to be selfish and afraid of confrontation to the point that you would allow a baby to be killed. How is that loving? Will you stand by if this highway had a baby carriage in it and let a van roll right over to an 18-wheeler come and crush that baby? Or would you not run into the traffic to drag that baby carriage out? Yet you won't stand here on a sidewalk with a sign and let these young women and men know that they're not in a hopeless situation, that there is hope in Christ, there is choice in Christ, there is joy and love and peace in Christ as long as we will come to Him and not sin, not murder, not steal, not kill. But we will come to Him and trust Him to solve our problems, Him to help us out, and His servants, the, the church, to provide need or for the, these people in their time of need. Don't tell me it's loving to turn, not the other cheek, but to turn your head away from people who are lost and dying and going to hell claiming, I love them, but I can't tell them the truth because that might offend them. That is hatred. That is selfish, self-love and hatred 
to ignore someone in dire need, someone that is dying in their sins, going to hell, and refusing to tell them they do not have to go to hell because God has made provision through His blood, through the blood of the Lamb to save them. It is an offense. Everybody that is saved by the gospel, it is an offense. We had to know that we were dead and dying in our sins. We could not earn our own salvation and that the only hope is that Jesus shed blood could be upon us and all we have to do is turn to God, not resist Him, but beg Him to save us of our sins and He is gracious and loving and merciful to forgive us of our sins and create us as a new being, transforming our hearts and minds and souls forever. But you have to tell them the bad news, that if you sin and you stay in sin, you're dying and you're going to hell, hopelessly lost forever. Don't tell me it's love to ignore a person that is dying. So from the abortuary clinic here at Planned Parenthood in Sioux Falls, South Dakota, I'm Ken Moran asking you, when are you gonna do your duty and come down here and join these other people to defend human life that was created Genesis 9 and 6 in the very image of God.